So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to do another case study, glowing up as an empowered feminine. If you're interested in a video like that, please keep watching. So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to do another case study on the beautiful actress, Megan Good. And this one I want to call Becoming because in her transformation, I've seen her go from the girl next door into becoming the woman she is today. And I think it's an amazing transformation. Definitely want to talk about her transformation in this video. If you do not know who I am, my name is Amber Turner and I am the author of You Choose Your Outfit with outfit being the metaphor for your reality and experience. I'm also the CEO of the Centered Apparel brand and we believe in being bold, being loud and being confident. And in this video, in this case study video, of glowing up as an empowered feminine, we are talking about the beautiful Megan Good. And so one of the things that I love about her is that to me, she has gone from, like she's been in the industry for such a long, long time. And she's gone from what I consider pretty much like the girl next door to, you know, experimenting with her style and who she was and actually like getting still and finding stillness and discovering who she is. And I think that that's important for all of us to do is at some point in our life, we have to become still. And you know, when it comes to manifesting, especially when it comes to feminine energy and standing in your feminine power, part of feminine energy is surrendering and allowing. And I definitely recognize that in her journey. When we talk about you know, glowing up as an empowered feminine, you know, reinvention and actually coming into her own. I believe she embodies that so much because, you know, growing up in the industry and having so many people have opinions about how you should look and how you should act. I'm sure that impacted her, especially growing up and being so young. She practically grew up in the industry and I can't imagine how impactful that could be on a young woman. But her transformation, her reinvention, I just think is a beautiful, beautiful journey. And I look at her because I, I kind of grew up with her because I've watched a lot of her movies and a lot of shows that she was in growing up too. And to see her from then to now being a beautiful wife, you know, standing on her own, an author and all of these things, all of these amazing things. And you can definitely tell the inner work she had to do. And, and she has been very vocal about that. All the inner work that she had to do on herself to get to the point of where she is, having a beautiful life, having a beautiful relationship and a beautiful career. And I just love that. And if you follow me on this channel, you know that I am a big proponent that it all starts within. When it comes to glowing up as an empowered feminine. It starts on the inside. It starts with the self-discovery and understanding who you are and what you need and what you want out of life. And she definitely had got to a point in her career, in her life, where she had to really take a deep dive into who she was, what she wanted, especially especially when it came to her romantic relationships. And what I find a lot of times when it comes to transformation, glowing up as an empowered feminine, we oftentimes get to a point in our lives where, you know, our relation, our relationship doesn't work out or it really has a negative impact on us that kind of leads us to taking a step back and say, hey, what do I really want out of life? And in our prior case study with Sierra Wilson, that also happened in her life, and that also happened in Megan Good's life, and we're gonna talk about that as well. And so going back a little bit, we're gonna go back to 1995 when she made her appearance in the movie Friday. She was only 13 years old, and I still remember seeing little Megan Good in that movie. Mama! I don't get it. Right. Hey. Great movie, by the way, very funny. Her first major roles in a movie. And from there, Megan Good was in a lot of other movies and a lot of other shows. One movie that I remember her in as well was Eve's Bayou, and that was a great movie as well. 
I wasn't lying. I believed you. And I hated him. I hated him for you. Tell that she was very, very talented in her roles, especially in Eve's Bayou. I really enjoyed her in that movie as well. Definitely had a look of the girls next door. She definitely was the girl next door. One of the things that I personally remember when I would see her in reoccurring roles on TV shows and in movies is that she really had the girl next door look. <music> and started in the industry at 13 years old and she grew up in front of our eyes. And Megan Good was known for having a certain look. She always had long hair and um, very, very classic look, very girl next door. But even though she had the girl next door look, she was actually linked with uh, certain relationships that did not work out in her favor as she has stated in um, interviews that you know the relationships didn't serve her well and oftentimes when it comes to you know reinvention wanting to glow up transform and tap into our feminine power we go through things it usually has to do with relationships and Megan Good was no exception so Megan Good was linked to people like Nick Cannon, 50 Cent, People that you would think that the girl next door type of girl would be in relationships with. And obviously, they did not work in her favor and they didn't leave the best impression on her. Oftentimes, honestly, relationships don't often <laughs> leave good impressions on us. I mean, sometimes you can get into a relationship and find out that you're just not compatible and you leave feeling okay or better off sometimes but for the majority of us and for the most part relationships often leave us with scars and Megan Good was no exception to that she definitely had scars which led her to making the decision to become celibate. He literally began to work on me and mold me and the more that I surrendered to him and I allowed him to do that and the pain's gonna hurt a little bit but when I get over the hump, I'm so much better for it. That's when, you know, I, I knew in my spirit, okay, it's time to be absent, it's time to stop having sex, it's time to just start doing things, not just doing some things by the book. Now, celibacy is not something that <laughs> should be taken lightly. Oftentimes when people come to the decision to become celibate, it's because they are really trying to be intentional, especially when it comes to manifesting a good relationship into their life. And, you know, I, I totally understand that. However, comma, that is a really, really hard decision to make, especially when you had been being intimate prior to making the decision to be celibate. That is not an easy journey. And it wasn't easy for Megan. She actually had some setbacks, but one day she committed to celibacy. Now during this time that she was committing to celibacy and being intentional with her life, she met Devon. <laughs> Franklin this is very pivotal in her life this is where you can really see a definite transformation a definite glow up for her and her personal life and career uh, now prior to Devon Franklin actually was celibate himself um, I believe he was celibate 10 years prior to even meeting her which you know, that is commitment, that is intention, and he definitely had intentions on finding his divine feminine. So for me, I look at her journey and her transformation, especially when she came to the decision to become celibate and very and be very intentional with her life, and especially when it came to relationships, as it was just so transformative for her. I think about feminine power and feminine energy. 
Um, it's about standing in your sovereignty, um, standing in your power, and surrendering to life. And so feminine energy is very still, okay? It is very receptive. We surrender and allow life. And at that point in her life, she was surrendering and allowing life. Because when you're in a space where you're making a choice to be celibate, especially in Hollywood, definitely a hard choice. Because for a lot of women, we become intimate with people because we want validation, we want to be loved, we have fear, we, we're operating out of fear because we're afraid that someone might cheat on us if we do not, if we're not intimate with them. And so for her to come to that conclusion and to surrender to that and actually be still and say, hey, you know, I'm surrendering to life. So that is an amazing choice, but a really, really hard, tough decision to make, especially in Hollywood. And for her to do that, with the intention of calling into uh, her existence a partner would be okay with that. It's just amazing. So walks in Devon Franklin, um, you know, he's an ordained minister, a producer, and they actually were working on a project together, a movie or something where they met each other. And in a lot of interviews, she knew that Devon Franklin was going to be her husband. He say, Megan, you must get no, out of the relationship. Well, you know yeah. what's weird? How does it come to you? When, yes. he, when he told me that Devon was my husband, it sounded like that. It really? sounded like Devon's your husband. One of the things she says is that God spoke to her and said, Devon Franklin is your husband. And I'm like, where's God talking to me about that kind of stuff? I just think that it that is so beautiful. But even though she knew she heard those words even though she had a feeling that devon franklin was going to be her husband she was still still she was still still she was surrendering and allowing life to unfold that is feminine energy when you can sit back you're not forcing anything you're allowing life to unfold in the most amazing and beautiful way. That's how universe God works. When you can sit there and have faith that it's going to work out in your favor, that is feminine energy to its best. So in 2011, Devon Franklin and Megan Good actually started dating. And for them, that was a uh, very, a, a, a very spiritual practice and to me I liken it to fasting and um, you know overcoming urges and that's a beautiful thing like I I just love how they were able to do that because they are very good-looking people and they were able to you know um, bypass the urge of being intimate and actually get to know each other on a deeper spiritual level and that's what they did. And so fast forward to 2012, they were married and, and thereafter, they wrote the book, The Weight, I believe it's called, and they talk about their journey in being celibate and how they came together and their beautiful relationship. It's an amazing relationship. Now, I wanna talk about, I wanna talk a little bit about her journey. Now, um, her having to surrender and to, um, really be still, especially in Hollywood, is definitely, uh, definitely takes commitment. And I feel like that's when she really started to come into her own. You could see um, just the way that she speaks about things and life is just amazing to me. I really just find her very fascinating, the way that she speaks about life and her journey and her physical transformation to me uh, is parallel to her inward transformation and how she came to these conclusions and how she just allowed life to unfold in the way that it did. Now, if you want to talk a little bit about her physical transformation, like I said, in her earlier career and even in her early adulthood, she 
was the girl next door. Now she experiments. Uh, you can just tell the way that she carries herself and how comfortable she is in her skin. Um, for the longest time, she was known for her long hair. She chopped all that off and she was experimenting with edgy new styles. And now she's got uh, short blonde hair and she is just so comfortable being herself. Her inner evolution that she had to go through to get her to the place where she is now definitely is manifested in her outward appearance where she is just like, this is me. And she just, to me, just radiates this like confidence. And I love that. Like you can tell that she, she is so, so confident. And that's what to me is so beautiful about her transformation. So beautiful about her glow up is how confident she is. She can go against the grain. She is bold. I love that. And one of the things that I say about our censored apparel brand is to be confident and bold and be loud. And she definitely embodies that. And to me, her transformation on the inside and the things that she went through in her life has led her to this confidence where she is bold, where she's edgy, where she's like, this is me and I love it. So anyways, you guys, that is all for this video. I really wanted to share Megan Good's Glowing Up as an Empowered Feminine case study because I think that um, her transformation is so, so beautiful and it exudes confidence. And I love how she did the inner work. She recognized that she had to be still and honor herself. I love Megan Good's transformation from the girl next door to being a confident, beautiful woman. Her glowing up to an empowered feminine, to me, exudes confidence. But anyways, you guys, that is all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I do videos on business, life, and everything in between. And that is all. And I also, I have a free quiz on my website if you're interested in taking it. If you're living an empowered feminine life, um, it's at ambermarieturner.com. Also, I have a free download on my website if you're interested. And that is how to glow up as an empowered feminine. And that will be on my website under free stuff. Check that out as well. And until next time, you guys, I would check you in the next video. Peace.